invite you to rise and join me in the call to worship as listed in our bulletin. Come join the fellowship of God's people, people who gather as faithful disciples of Christ. We seek the one who frees us from uncertainty and doubt. Come join the welcome of God's people, people who meet together for justice and peace. Come, join the celebration of God's people, people of the one who was and is and shall ever be. We raise our voices in praise and honor to God, and worship the one who is faithful. Please join in singing hymn number 713, Seek Ye First. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Ask and it will be given to you. God has pr promised us the grace and forgiveness and the love of Jesus Christ. Come home again and be the people God intended. Amen. This time I invite the children forward. Sit way down there. You want to come sit over here? Come sit, come sit over here, okay? 
<laughs> Maybe she doesn't know that. I don't want to sit near Leo. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about who it's more important to take care of, yourself or everyone else. Who do you think? Everyone else. Everyone else? I think both because you should take care of yourself oh, and oh, should take care of other people to just be nice. Yes. What happens if you take care of everyone else and then you're so tired that you run out of energy? You should, you take should. a nap. Take a nap? Yeah, I like that idea. What, what happens with a phone when, when it runs out of energy or your tablet when it runs out of energy? Um, you should charge it. You should charge it. Do you think you can charge yourself? Yeah. Yes, by sleeping. By sleeping? What else can you do to charge yourself? Drink water. Eat well, what are your What are your, some of your favorite things to do that give you energy? Well, sleeping my favorite. Sleeping's your favorite. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I knew you were my favorite. <laughs> okay. Do you like playing with friends? Yeah. Does that give you energy? Yeah. Not really. Not really. Yeah. Leah gives you energy. Does it make you happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does it make you feel good about yourself? It makes. And I should have attitude and not talk back to my parents. Oh, I bet your mom likes that, that you shouldn't have attitude and talk back to your parents. She was yes. embarrassed when I said that. No, don't worry, I tell Clint that all the time. Don't have attitude and don't talk back. You're going to be hearing that for the next 10 years, at least. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes. So Jesus said we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So you're right, we have to love ourselves and take care of ourselves so we can love everyone else. Mm -hmm. So today I'm gonna to talk to the adults about self-care. And taking care of yourself. And you know what I'm gonna do for self-care? I'm gonna go camping for a week. Ah, can we have a surprise now? If the surprise wasn't for you, it's for somebody else and she's not here. I'll show you after church. Oh, I thought you said it was for us. No, you don't get a surprise every time. I promise uh, I'll, bring, uh, I'll bring a surprise back from camp, like maybe a rock or some sea glass or some, something like that. Toy? I don't have toys at camp. <laughs> what kind of camp do you think I go to? Allegheny? No, I go to Dunkirk. And when you get older, you could go there and sleep in a cabin. Oh, with our grandma and grandpa. Our grandma and grandpa we're gonna stay with tonight for a sleepover. Is they have a they have a um, cabin. But do you know who leads the camp that you could go to? Miss Sandy. You could go to camp for a week with Miss Sandy. Is Miss Sandy here today? No. But would you like that? Would that be yeah. good self care? We're stay we're staying um, with our grandma for the night today. That's good self care for your parents. <laughs> and then they can get relaxing. Yes, I see. I see a long nap in the future. Okay, let us pray. Jesus, you taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves. So remind us to love ourselves. Amen. Please join in singing. Him, please stay seated and join in singing hymn number 219, Surely the Presence, as printed in the bulletin.
come now as we lift up our joys and concerns and bring them to our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we are in the middle of the summer months. We looked forward to rest and recreation, but time is moving rapidly on, and we still find ourselves stressed and weary. We need to slow down. We know this, but yet find this hard to do. We load ourselves up with activities, stresses, duties, and then wonder how we will survive them. As you found us before, Lord, find us again. Wrap your arms of compassion around us. Help us to savor the times that we have with each other. Make us keenly aware of the magnificence of this world. Draw us to the times of peace and rest. As we bring the names of loved ones to you for your healing mercies, remind us that we too stand in need of your healing love. Give us strength, courage, and joy that we might become disciples who are worthy of your kingdom. Today we pray especially for Robert Huntley, Jackie, Bonnie, Dottie, Ken, Diane, Mary, Jen, Tina, Lynn, Sophia, Simona, Steve, Ralph, June, Marianne, Robert Stachura, Terry, Carrie, Jay, and Dan. Are there others we'd like to lift up at this time? With joys or concerns? Yes. D Jackie. Um, Sharon called for the poor church here to do the three days are going home with COVID for one thing. And the other thing is she got a call last night with Daddy Klein. He's in his sister's hospital. Um, she did a call for emergency help. She can't breathe. Okay, so. so So pray for Sharon and Dave as they recover from COVID. And Dottie is in sisters. She had trouble breathing. So we definitely lift her up in our prayers. Are there other joys or concerns that we'd like to lift up at this time? Yes. Cassie, yes. Um, What's the name? Asia. Asia, who was diagnosed with breast cancer. And we pray for a week at camp, at family camp, for all those campers out there. It is going to be a busy week. And we pray as we go into camp today in the midst of thunderstorms. <laughs> so pray that we remain somewhat dry this week, but it will be a fun week. We pray these prayers and those that remain in our hearts in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the gospel from the book of Genesis chapter 18 verses 20 through 33. Then the Lord said, "How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done it all together according to that outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know." So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came, came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. 
Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you then destroy the city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if, if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to them, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty I will not do it. Then he answered, O oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak, Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, O oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak one more time. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. I call that arguing with a child. <laughs> the Gospel reading is from the Gospel attributed to Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the valley and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who seek all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will give, be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles is enough for today. Please join, rise if you are able and join in singing hymn number 803, If My People Will Pray, two times through.
Jesus, my first thought isn't, man, he really had so much to teach us about mental health. Prayer? Yes. Love? Yes. Peace? Yes. Compassion for others? Standing against injustice and right religious bigotry? Also yes. But mental health is more of a modern concept, created by psychology and therapy, both of which are healthy and necessary. Yet we know that Jesus was one of the most mentally healthy people probably ever. He was always centered, at peace, patient, and had an infinite love for others. The definition of mental health in my book. Any person that naps during storms is more annoyed at the storm than scared and begrudgingly calms said storm because the disciples were the ones freaking out, is a pretty centered dude. So while Jesus probably never said, blessed are those that practice self-care, for you shall become mentally healthy, we know that's exactly what he practiced himself, using modern terms. We also know that to love God and love people, that God is love, and the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace. That all sounds a lot like the deeper levels of mental health. Jesus must have a lot to teach us about how to be mentally healthy. Over the millennia, he started a rich tradition of complete contemplatives that dissected and practiced spirituality of Jesus. There is much ancient wisdom in the Christian contemplative tradition that is highly relevant for the 21st century. After many years of trial and error, I feel I've come to my own understanding of how we can cultivate our own mental health. So let's begin. First, abide in Jesus. One of the most important lessons I had to learn in my spiritual journey is to simply rest in God. Jesus said in John 15, Abide in me and I in you. As the branches cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. We cannot be truly faithful unless we rest in the presence of God. This really is such a simple principle, but how many of us actually practice it? I didn't, and when I did, it wasn't nearly enough. I didn't even know what abide actually meant at first. Not a word we use a lot nowadays. And so I kept making poor decisions in life. Failing, getting behind, snapping at people, judging people being impatient with people, the opposite of being fruitful. Then I read John 15. I read it many times, but this time with new eyes. We literally cannot do anything of consequence without the presence of God. Secondly, get away to pray. So how do you practice the presence of God and abide in God's presence? Jesus lived in a cultural context where Roman oppression and societal conflict was the norm. The Jews were expecting a Messiah to save them and expected Jesus to fulfill that role. Jewish culture at that time was a boiling point, so Jesus must have felt immense pressure. Jesus showed us the way to, men to mental health when he often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. His answer to life's turmoil was to rest in God's presence in silence and solitude. By the way, he didn't bring scrolls of scripture to exegete, but that's a controversial topic for another time. He made it clear that when we pray, we go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father. Whether we go to our room, on a retreat, or into the wilderness, the key to mental health is silently enjoying the presence of God. 
Silence is God's first language. Everything else is a poor translation. Thirdly, love God and love people. J.I. Packer said that those who know God have great thoughts about God. Many Christians have a dry relationship with God, and I believe that is because we often misunderstand who God is. We know from Scripture that God is infinite, abiding love, and we know that Jesus' greatest commandments were to love God and love people. So to me, the key to a fruitful relationship with God is to experience God's infinite love and give that love away. We cannot be mentally healthy without experiencing God's transcendent love. Now, yes, there are other techniques for improving our mental health, including journaling, therapy, healthy relationships, sunlight, sleep, and more, and they work. But I believe the love and gratitude must be at the center of our spiritual practice. Paul said, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. So when we pray to God, we must remember that God is infinite and always present, an ever-present help in the times of needs. If we think that God is distant, that's just not accurate. God's love and peace is here, always and everywhere. Thomas Keating said, the chief thing that separated us from God is the thought that we are separate from God. God is always with us, bursting forth, permeating all things. But it's often our own guilt, attachment, worry, stress, anxiety, or distractions that cloud our view of the loving presence of God. We don't have to go far at all to experience God's love and peace. If we let go of our mental clutter and let our awareness transcend past it, we will experience God and become mentally healthy. Richard Rohr said, all great spirituality teaches about letting go of what you don't need and who you are not. Fourthly, become one with God. Now, I believe that Jesus was a mystic by the technical definition of the word. The literal definition of mystic is a person who seeks by contemplation and self-surrender to obtain unity with or absorption into the deity or the absolute. Mysticism is not crystals, tarot, and witchcraft. Mysticism is becoming one with God, with the divine. Jesus said, the Father and I are one. So by the strictest sense of the word, Jesus was a mystic. Two here, things here. We need to destigmatize the word mystic. We need to destigmatize our ability to become one with God. Jesus is not the only one that has that ability. For what is Christian faith if we are, do not have an abiding, loving, united relationship with God? This relationship is the key to living with peace, joy, and wisdom in the 21st century. What's cool is that Christianity has a long and rich tradition of mysticism, contemplation, and prayer. There are a whole slew of Christian contemplatives and monks including Ignatius, Benedict, Augustine, Thomas Keating, Richard Rohr, Joan of the Cross, and Thomas Merton. The point is, not only did Jesus become one with God, but there is also a clear method of becoming one with God ourselves. One of the best teachings on how to accomplish that is by Thomas Keating in his book, Open Mind, Open Heart. This is through the practice of centering prayer. Father Keating taught us to use a sacred word as a preparation for experiencing God directly. This is done by gently repeating a sacred word such as God, love, or peace. The word is not repeated quickly by force as in chanting. It is simply repeated any time we get distracted 
by other things than the presence of God. The sacred word is a way of centering ourselves, which positions us in a state of surrender to the presence of God. So you could do this in line at the grocery store if you're distracted from God. From that place of surrender, our consciousness and awareness expand to contemplate the infiniteness of God. We let go of all the edges, objects, thoughts, and feelings, and surrender to the infinite peace of God. When we become grateful for the infinite peace, we begin to feel the infinite love of God as well. When those attachments dissolve, we become one with God as Jesus did. This oneness with God is also a non-dual awareness in a spiritual state that exists in all religions. This worldview is known as perennial philosophy, the belief that the divine reality keeps recurring in different world religions with different metaphors and vocabulary. The transcendent state has been called the source, the divine, God, infinite presence, transcendent love, Brahman, Christ consciousness, and more. But from Buddhism to Christianity to Hinduism and everywhere in between, they all describe the same spiritual experience. So we can reach the pinnacle of human mental health by directly experiencing the presence of God. It is important to note that Christianity is not the only way of experiencing God. It seems that God is too big to be boxed into Orthodox theology. Lastly, be present and be grateful. The last and simplest ingredient of Jesus-like mental health is being present. Call it mindfulness, faith, or just living in the moment. The principle is still the same. We cannot fully experience the presence of God and be mentally healthy without being present. Jesus outlined this so beautifully that I must include the whole passage. Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What will, shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. When I think of Jesus, I see a man who wasn't worried about anything. For the most part, think of sweating blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, but who wouldn't? He lived in the moment and trusted that God would provide for all things. Paul even said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And again, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. We attain this level of mindfulness through detachment. 
Peter Scrazzo said, detachment is the great secret of interior peace. By detaching ourselves from the worries of life, we can more fully surrender in faith to the peaceful presence of God. When we cast our cares upon him, the worries of life stop clouding our view of the divine that exists everywhere. By being in the moment and practicing gratitude, we cultivate a deeper sense of peace, joy, and mental health. I hope this gave you some practical steps to improve your mental health in a deep way. I also believe the term mental health doesn't quite do true spirituality justice. Spirituality doesn't just make you mentally healthy. It provides a deeper sense of love, joy, peace, and wisdom, something people desperately need in this world. What do you think? What is your experience with mental health and spirituality? Amen. Having received the grace of God and the redemption of Christ, we live strengthened in the faith with our hearts overflowing with thankfulness. From the depths of our hearts, we offer to God the very best we have. Our morning offering will now be brought forward. continue the transforming work of your spirit in and through our congregation. Amen. Please be seated. A few quick reminders. I am leaving today for Dunkirk, but my cell number is in the bulletin if you need to text me with an emergency. Um, I will be home Saturday, but I will be here next Sunday. So I'm going on a mini vacation, but not a vacation. So if you need me for an emergency, please text me. Um, and the, the biggest announcement is our community picnic is the August 3rd from 5.30 to 7. I think Sandy wants everyone here about between 4 and 4.15. And there is a sign-up sheet in the fellowship hall, although I know she said she's doing good with donations. Are there other announcements? Then let us rise and join in singing our closing hymn, hymn number 638, I Need Thee Every Hour.
beloved of God, you have been healed and forgiven. God has poured God's love upon you that you may be faithful disciples, offering healing, love, and forgiveness to all. Go in peace and may God's peace always be with you. Amen. Thank you.